welcome back to my channel. So this year marks the fifth year that I have been using my bullet journal. So technically, if you count my first bullet journal in terms of what is actually on my shelf, my bullet journal anniversary or bujoversary, if you will, is at the beginning of April. However, I did technically start at the end of March, and so this video is going to go on up in March because why not? So in honor of my fifth bujoversary, I thought I would do a little video of my top 10 tried and true stationary items, I guess, if you will, that I use when I am bullet journaling because, you know, I've been doing this for a while and I definitely have some things that I come back to frequently, honestly, very frequently. So what I thought I would do is take you over to the table and I will show you all of the things that I like to do. And if you're interested in checking any of them out, check in the description box for links. I will try and find links for as many of them. Some things that I use, I do get here and I did get here in France and might not be readily available online or available overseas. So I will do my best. So without further ado, let's go and check out my top 10 tried and true stationary items. So. My first category is going to be writing utensils, and I have a couple of different ones, so let's start with kind of the basics. So I have chosen kind of representative items to talk about these. So my first tried and true item in writing utensils are microns. Now, I know this is a Statler box, but this is actually another tip. I tried out the Statler pigment liners a couple of years ago, and they come in this really handy box that you can flip back and it stands up on its own and I decided that I actually prefer the ink in the microns I feel like it just is more of a true black and what I did is once I actually ran out of ink in the pigment liners I just chucked the pens and I saved the box and so anytime I buy microns I just immediately put them in this box so that is actually a really great tip I love having this because then it's just really easy to grab them and put them back as I'm working so microns are my first tried and true. I use these all the time when I am doing spreads. Sometimes I will write spreads with other pens, but anytime I wanna do something that I wanna make sure that it's not going to smudge on me, I am going to use microns because these are great like permanent archival ink. They don't really erase or anything like that. They are just, fantastic. And again, this is one of those kind of personal preference things. So everything that I'm saying are just my personal preferences. There's obviously a ton of other options out there. And depending on what you have access to and what you prefer, you might not agree. You probably won't agree with all 10 of my top 10 things, but these are just personal preference. So number one, microns. Number two, I actually love writing with a gel pen. This is my everyday writer and I've used different ones, but the sort of tried and true nature of it is I like a black 0.3 as a maximum gel pen to write with in my bullet journal. And one of the reasons for that is I've noticed that back in the day when I used to use microns for everything and I used to write with a micron, I think I write kind of hard and so the tip gets pushed in on the micron and then at, after a certain point you can only write if it's specifically straight up and down and I tend to write on an angle and so it just like gets really hard to write with. So I know that you can get a little bit more transfer with things like a gel pen but I find that they just hold up better and they last longer when I am writing in my bullet journal. Also having a point three, I write pretty small. Uh, when I first started using gel pens I was using a point five, and then I went down to a point four now it's a 0.3. This one is actually a 0.25. So that's why I say 0.3 is kind of the maximum that I like to use, but I kind of use in between a 0.2 and a 0.3 when I write in my bullet journal. And I just really like these. And I found a couple of really good ones. So this is a Pentel Sleecy. Um, most of mine tend to be Pentel or um, what's the other big brand? Um, Pilot. Yeah, some of those. I tend to find this type of a pen in more of like the Asian stationery shops. So a lot of the pens that I have are ones that I either bought when I was in Korea or I got from Jet Pens and I will always gra gravitate towards a smaller point size. So that is number two. Number three and four have to do with brush lettering. So if you've been around for a while, you know that I love to do brush lettering and modern calligraphy, hand lettering, whatever you want to call it. And I have two go-to pens. So number three is the Pentel sign pen and specifically the soft nib. So when you look at the Pentel sign pens, and I actually, I pulled out my other ones, but I don't have... 
No, I only ever bought one of the hard nib and I didn't like it. So when it ran out of ink, I just never bought another one. So the soft nib is going to be the one that has this kind of sparkle detail on the body of the pen and the hard, sorry, did I say soft? The soft nib has the sparkle detail. The hard nib is going to be just a matte case, there's gonna be no sparkle detail. So if you are looking for the soft nib, you wanna look for the one that looks kind of sparkly. And I absolutely love these. As you saw, I have basically almost every single color. This is obviously not a pencil sign pen, but all the rest of these are. Um, I love these. These are absolutely my go-to pen for whenever I'm doing headers, for whenever I'm doing quotes, whatever. I love this pen. And I also find that this is a really great pen to use if you are a beginner and you are a lefty learning how to letter because it's just so much easier to control the nib. Going on with the lettering bit, my number four tried and true is a Tombow dual brush pen. And I do actually have the entire set of Tombows. I did not pull out. I have like the little carrying case. Um, if you've seen some of my... Uh, planned with me's I do sometimes bring it out when I'm doing uh, when I'm choosing my color scheme But I just picked one as kind of a representative. Of course I picked gray because I'm me So I absolutely love the Pentel sign pens I find that same with the so if you've never seen this is what the nib looks like for the Pentel sign pen I love this for doing really fine detailed or smaller writing and then I use a Pentel sign pen When or sorry, I use a Tombow when I want to do larger So a lot of times I will use this when I'm doing the month uh, on my intro page or whatever. So I really like that. And I do in fact also use the bullet point. A lot of times I will use this when I'm drawing my tracker, for example, if I want to use the same color that I use just kind of in the general color scheme rather than doing something like the Micron. Um, so I use both sides of these. These are kind of my go-to marker. I have tried different ones, but I just really like the color and I really like the style of brush that they have on the brush side of the pen. I just find it really easy to work with as compared to some other brands that I find a little bit trickier to deal with. For me, potentially the way that I write, potentially because I'm a lefty, I don't know, but I've just gotten really used to writing with these. So the next section is sort of miscellaneous tools. And these are things that I use more or less frequently. So we'll start with the one that I use the absolute most frequently. And I think we're on number five right now. So number five, Oh my gosh. Number five is this stencil from Ink by Jang. And I actually have two of her stencils. Um, oops. I also have the mini one. I don't use this one as much just because I tend to use, I like having this many little squares that I can kind of do all at once. So I predominantly, and you can tell with where the pen marks are, I predominantly use these two middle ones. These are the smaller size, but they are spaced to fit a five millimeter dot grid. And I will sometimes use the other ones, but I use these whenever I am drawing my events or my task boxes. And yeah, I just, I've, I really love this stencil. Um, sometimes she is out of stock, so I will link it, but I don't actually know if it's currently in stock, but I use this every single day in my bullet journal. Number five is a ruler. Now, I don't use a ruler all the time, but when I do use a ruler, this is the one that I like to use. It is great because it is just wide enough that I can fit sort of the, so if you take a A5, it fits across and I can just do a solid straight line here. And when I'm doing a month, it is almost long enough to do the entire month. I do have to shift it down a little bit, but I like how small and like maneuverable this is. So I think this is, I don't know, what is, what is this called? I call it a triangle ruler. I have been told what it is called, but I honestly just can't remember it because it's a triangle, so I call it a triangle ruler. Um, and this is one that I just got at the local, like, you know, in the school supply section of one of my local stores, but I'm sure you can find something like this. Um, but I really like this because I find it's really easy to hold on to having this extra, like it's easy to move around, whereas if you have a really thin ruler, you have to like be right on top of it as you're drawing and it's harder to kind of move around. So I like having this big triangle bit so I can kind of just like move it more easily. Then number six, a glue runner. I love using glue runners. I use this when I set up my language log and I put in my pictures. I use this when I set up my anti-racism tracker. Anytime I want to glue something into my notebook, I use a glue runner because one, I find it doesn't mess up the pages as much um, when you use actual glue, like a glue stick or just like squeezy glue. 
that's not what it's called, but you know what I mean. Um, it like bubbles up the page a little bit and it takes forever to dry. Whereas this, it is so precise. It is just like immediately dry and it's super handy to do. I don't have to worry about this accidentally spilling in my pen, my, in my pencil pouch or anything like that. So I always keep these on hand. I use them also all the time when I do things like junk journaling because oh, so handy. So I don't remember if I said this is number seven. So number eight and nine we're going to do together. So number eight is notebooks. I, well, I'm using this one because this is the notebook that I have used the most as a bullet journalist. So I use an A5 Leuchtturm with the dot grid. I do use the hardcover because I like having that many pages. So I will say that ghosting does not bother me. Bleed through, yes, but ghosting really does not bother me. And you will see on my pages, I have a ton of ghosting because the pages are pretty thin. However, like I said, it doesn't bother me. And this honestly has been my go-to notebook since I started bullet journaling. I really like how wide it is compared to something like a moleskin, which is a little bit narrower. Um, I have since kind of switched over and I really like a B6 and I do like hand making my own journals, but I know that that's kind of a particular talent and it, you know, you have to have the patience and the time and the materials to actually make and bind your own notebooks. So in terms of bullet journals that I'm actually going to purchase, I love the Leuk term. I don't always buy the official bullet journal. This one, for example, is just the copper one. It's not actually an official bullet journal. I do like using those as well, but this is honestly my go-to notebook for anything. I just really like the colors and the paper. And again, this is one that you're, there's going to be a lot of difference of opinion. And I know that this is just my preference. Number nine is a notebook cover. So I am currently using the scale and leather notebook cover, which I will say is gorgeous, but definitely pricey. The other notebook covers that I usually use are from choose to do. And actually I should have grabbed one. So my other go-to for notebook covers is choose to do. This one is actually from my collaboration with them. This is the choose to create in the A5 size. I just grabbed the A5 since that is the size notebook that I currently have. And I have used their notebooks for like three years or their notebook covers. I've used their notebook covers for like three years and I love them. They stand up really, really well. They're a lot cheaper than some of the ones on the market because they are, I think it's vegan leather and uh, they're just honestly so, so, so pretty. So I love having a notebook cover specifically because my bullet journals now last me a year. So when I first started bullet journaling, they only lasted me about four months and it wasn't super necessary to have a notebook cover because I went through them pretty quick. But now that they last me 12 months, months, it gets like, you can really tell on the spine and like picking up stuff from the table. They really get beat up over time. And so, especially since this is something I'm going to archive and save and refer back to in the future. So where was I? Sorry that somebody rang the doorbell. Um, Yes, so since I keep my notebooks for an entire year, this having having it in a notebook cover really helps it stay nice so that since this is something I archive and refer back to, it's something that's going to last me longer since it's not quite so destroyed from just being on my desk all year. So love using a notebook cover. And number 10 is a pencil case. So this is one of those weird things that I'm at the point where my bullet journal doesn't actually leave my house unless I'm traveling somewhere. And even so, I still use a pencil case for the pens that I use in my bullet journal. Now, if you are of a more minimalist approach, you probably don't need a pencil case that is this big. However, since I like to do a little bit of color coding, I don't really, I don't doodle, I don't really do a lot of washi tape, except for October, as you all know. One of the things that I do enjoy doing is I like to have different colored pens that I use. And because I have such a large collection of pens, it would be kind of a shame if I didn't actually use them. So it's one of the ways that, you know, use what I have kind of thing. So what I do is I, well, I got this, pencil case ages ago, oh my gosh, and it's like kind of destroyed over here because I have used it for so many years, but I love it. I don't ever really use these pockets here and it's almost never zipped closed, but I like it because I have two layers. And so the way that I have mine set up is I have my color code pens, whoops. So my color code pens, which includes this one are in here. So these are all my Tombos and I actually have this one pulled out because it's a reminder to actually do my ballet for today so I can complete my 100 days challenge. Um, but normally it would live back here. So all my color code pens live in the back and then any pens that I've pulled out for the month also live over here. 
after I do, after I film my next plan with me, I then will stash the, the pens for next month back here until I'm finished with the current month and I can put these away. So that is one thing. I also have, these are pens that I'm using pretty routinely, so I just kind of let them chill out over here. So when I close them, they're just kind of in there, but they're easy to grab. And then these are kind of the pens that I frequently will grab just sort of in general. So I have my eraser, I've got my Coletto, I have, oops, this um, fine liner permanent marker that I use on my choose to do overlay tapes. Um, so just like kind of random pens that I have. And honestly, some of these I use more than others, but I just kind of leave them in here because I like them. And if I want to use them, I have them right there. And then in the back, I have actually my backup little small stencil so I don't lose it. And I've got some pencil lead so that I have a mechanical pencil in here. If I run out of lead, I have it just right there and I know it's the right size. I also have two different types of whiteout. And if we're being perfectly honest, I use this kind a lot more just because it dries so much faster and it's much smoother on the page. And then I also usually will keep some um, pencil sign pens in the back here. So typically I would have my black one back here. I just had pulled that out because I was filming. So even though I am at my desk and I'm basically always at my desk and I could just use like a pencil like um, cup, I guess, I still just use a pencil case because it's just really easy to move around. And that way, if I ever am like moving to a different table, so sometimes, you know, if I'm filming and I'm working on my kitchen table, I just grab this entire thing and bring it on over and I don't have to like pull things out of a pencil cup or whatever to find it. Or when I'm ready to travel, all I do just zip it on up and I'm ready to go. And yeah, I don't know what it is, but I just love using a pencil case. So yeah, that is number 10. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 stationary items for working in my bullet journal and just bullet journaling kind of in general. So yeah, I thought that would just be a fun video to do for my five year bullet journal anniversary. And if you have any comments or questions about the things that I use, or if you saw something that maybe didn't make it into the top 10, but I showed it in the video and you have a question about it, let me know down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, so if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and are actually watching my end screen and you're not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you would. There's a little button right there for you to do it. And if you're interested in watching some more of my videos, I have links to two of my older videos off to the left there, so you can check those out if you would like to. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.